Where's the fire? <laughs> Maybe they're just in a hurry to get to your party. Aren't you impressed? Sure, but will your father be? Well, maybe, if you can refrain from setting off firecrackers under him. You were always pretty rough on his dignity, you know, Roy. But that was when I was knee-high to a grasshopper. Besides, I'm guest of honor now. That's right. We'd better hurry. Twilight and evening star Ending the day Music when soft guitars Begin to play Then starlight and moonbeam, we the golden veil, and love begins at sunset on the Can't you handle him? Uh, $182,000. The payroll and just enough to finish the dam. How do you know they took the money? Well, I don't think they'd blow a safe just to get my social security number. You know, it's been a pretty expensive proposition putting on a pioneer celebration in your honor, young fella. $10 fine for an automobile in the street. Good fast car would have come in mighty handy just now. Sorry, Sheriff. Whose ID was it anyhow? Yours. Yeah, I guess it was that. Yeah, you and your newspaper. Seems like we're splitting the blame, Gabby. Maybe I shouldn't have come home at all. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't. Notify the state police to be on the lookout in case they try to cash any of that money. Serial numbers will be published tomorrow. I'm going to get a shave, Kay. No shave tonight. Not when there's news to be printed. You started this pioneer week and you're going to end it by taking my whiskers off. You don't want to wait, Kay. I'll be glad to take you home. Oh, I don't mind waiting. For whom? Your father or the late guest of honor? Pioneer week, bah! I wish he'd never shown up. You said that before. Yeah, I know, and I'll say it again. If he hadn't come back, we'd still have $182,000. Curious coincidence, isn't it? Huh? But of course, it couldn't be any more than that. After all, no one can accuse a celebrity like Roy Rogers of uh, being interested in money. It's mighty nice of you to stick up for me that way, Mr. Allison. Especially when you're so keen about money yourself. What do you mean by that? Oh, just that I hear you run the Casaria gambling joint over across the state line. Where a man can really lose his shirt if he's got one to lose. Then perhaps you've heard that gambling is a respectable business in that state. And besides, I do have a ranch right here in this valley. 
Oh, I'm not doubting your respectability, Mr. Allison. I'm sure I'm just as anxious to defend your reputation as you seem to be to defend mine. Thanks. Say, who stuffed this owl, anyway? Greatest naturalist there is. Huh. Didn't do a very good job of it, did he? The eyes seem to be of different colored glass, and the feathers are much too smooth. <laughs> well, I guess I'll call it an evening. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> What's going on anyway, Gabby? You wrote me something about the dam when I sent you a power of attorney from a ranch. Why don't you wait and read the paper? <laughs> Why do you even bother to publish a paper? Anybody can get more news out of your whiskers. This is a mighty serious situation. You know the Red River. I ought to. I swam in it when it was a creek. Well, it won't be long before it won't even be a creek. Government's cutting it right off. Right here at its source in the mountain. Get your finger out of my eye. What for? Furnish power and light for what they call an essential industry. Well, I sort of figure it's essential to eat beef. What are we going to do for water? <laughs> you know, if you didn't gallivant around the country so much, you'd know. We're going to have a bypass canal from the dam. Whose dam? Well, you see, the government put up half the money. By scraping the bottom of the barrel, we managed to raise the other half to build the White Mountain Dam. We was going to bring the water from up here, down through the valley like this, into the old Red River. <laughs> Get your fingers out of my mouth. Well, that was a year ago. Since then, things have happened. Accidental explosions, careless workmen wrecking equipment. Why, a body'd think it was done on purpose. What's going to happen? Why don't you figure it out? We've used up the government money, and thanks to your Pioneer Day homecoming, ours is stolen. We're in a mighty bad jam, son. As his lights, give him the signal. Good job and a long job. This shutdown isn't permanent. Just give me a week or so to get things straightened out and you'll all be back on the job. That dam is going to be finished and you men are going to do the work. Now, as soon as we're ready to go ahead, Murdoch Hill notify you. This is payday. How about our dough? Mr. Sutherland's doing the best he can. What ain't enough? You'll get your money in a few days. Now break it up. Well, boys, stalling the payroll isn't going to do any good. We can't even pay for the materials already ordered. Gentlemen, I'm afraid we're licked. We are, unless we can do something about it. How many cattle have we got among us that we can market? If you didn't spend so much time singing, you'd know they're not fit for market. They're nothing but hiding horns. They'll be worse without water, and time's getting short. Say, Gabby, how many cattle have we got in the valley? Well, ain't over 2,000 head right in this room. All right. Even at a forced sale, that'd give us over $50,000. Well, that's only half what they'd be worth six months from now. And besides, $50,000 is only a drop in the bucket. We'll need four times that much. I know, Mr. Sutherland, but it'll do for a starter, and we can worry about raising the rest later. It isn't practical, Rogers. I'm against sacrificing our cattle. It isn't what we'll lose by selling our cattle ahead of time. It's what we'll lose if we can't raise money enough to finish the dam. The boy's absolutely right. He's got 300 head of his own. If he's willing to let them go, why ain't you? Well, frankly, I don't want to sell my cattle either, but, say, if we only had the necessary collateral... You mean you've thought of a way out, Allison? Well, yes and no. You see, uh, I have several partners in the Casa Rio. They're all wealthy men. Now, I know they'd be glad to advance us the money if we could just offer them the proper security. Say, how about our stock in the water company? Wouldn't that do? You mean as security? Sure. They ought to take that. Mm, I'm afraid not, because uh, 
While I don't agree with them personally, I happen to know that they feel this dam has been mismanaged. You know, all those accidents. And only by owning the stock outright could they have the uh, full control they'd require to protect their investment. You mean we'll have to sell them our stock? For the time being, yes. When the dam is finished, we could buy it back at a agreed price to cover interest. And in the meantime, these partners of yours will be controlling the water. And that means controlling the valley. You can count me out. And me too. What have you got to do with it? You're a sheep man. If you're any kind of a businessman, Rogers, you'd realize that Allison here is in the same boat with the rest of us. And besides, certainly his own partners aren't going to make it harsh on him. As I see it, we have no choice. Yeah, as I see it, we're mighty lucky to get out of a bad hole. Now, if your partners will agree to this, I'll collect that stock and turn it over to you tomorrow night. Well, I'm against it. And the Red River Gazette's going to tell the world. Trading with the pharmacy in the valley over the I'm his all you and for him I'd up and fight a circle saw. She can beat the doves a cooing when it comes to mountain wooing, that hillbilly sweetheart of mine. I'm the lady of hillbilly valley, and as pretty as a picture on the wall. I'm the pride of Smoky Mountain and as pure as bubbling fun. And she's gonna stay that way, as I recall. She's mine, all oh, you. And there's nothing for that gal I wouldn't do. There will never be no others if then I can have my druthers. That hillbilly sweetheart of mine. Hurry up and get me a shave. I'm a bad man with a razor today. I'll take a chance. What are you all steamed up about? That meeting. Somebody's trying to pull a hummer tucker. From what I heard, it'd be a great thing for the valley. You mean it'd be a great thing for Allison? Yeah, Allison knows what he's doing. <laughs> you bet your life he does. And as I see it, he was just waiting for one of us to suggest selling our stock. Yeah, and you wouldn't think anyone who could raise money that easily would be interested in small-time stuff like this ranch of his. Maybe Allison and his partners will have bigger ideas once they get hold of our stock. Well, I don't know much about business. Me neither. But I wouldn't trust Allison as far as you can throw a bull by the tail. Or you either. What do you mean by that? How about all them accidents been happening on the dam? What's that got to do with me? I wonder... Wouldn't surprise me any if you've been making some of them accidents happen on purpose. What'd you say, you old windbag? I don't chew my cabbage twice. Why, you... Look out, Gabby. After butting for I was just getting ready to level on him. Say, how much of that stuff you were telling Murdoch can you prove? I can't prove nothing. <laughs> you sure took in a lot of territory to not have something to go on. I got plenty to go on. What? Murdoch and Allison are working together. I can feel it right in the end of my whiskers. All right, fellas, get your instruments and load up. We're leaving town. Hey, you can't leave now. The thing's all snarled up like this. We're heading for El Paso for some more broadcasts. We can't do any good here. Besides, you can't convict a man by the feeling in the end of your whiskers. I'd be glad to stay, Gabby, if I could help, but... Well, then you certainly can't help any better than into a microphone in El Paso. Oh, you write to me every morning, and, and I'll write to you every night. Roy! Were you leaving without saying goodbye to me? I was going to dedicate the first broadcast from El Paso to you. I sing much better down there, and besides, that Rio Grande water is really swell for the pipes. By the time you get back, the dam will be finished, and everybody will be happy. It doesn't take much to make Red River Valley happy. A little water and a little soft soap, and they're all in the leather. Just so there's no hard feelings? You can't win every fight, you know. Well, maybe this is only the first round. 
Hey, Phil! This is the way to El Paso. They must have moved it. Where are we going, or is it confidential? We're not going far, but we're going to be awful quiet about it. I didn't think you'd leave old Gabby in a spot like this. You boys heard it all. I don't know what he's actually got on Murdoch, but it's probably enough to get his head blown off. So we're standing and catch the mess Gabby, huh? Or at least then until we find out what it's all about. As soon as it gets dark, we'll circle around back of my ranch and we'll steal some horses from myself. And Tim, you drive this bandwagon to Hank's old shack. You know where it is. Well, I'm more of a musician than a G-man, but it's your chamber music. Oh, Mike, get the saddle. Hey, Pat, you better go flag her down. We're going to stay in the valley for a certain reason, but no one must know it, particularly Gabby. But I haven't any secrets from Pappy. And he hasn't any secrets from anyone else. We've got to keep this quiet. <laughs> You're not going to get in any trouble, are you? Well, not if we can help it. But we've got to do a little investigating. All right, I won't say a word. All right, close your eyes and cross your heart. something too? No, Pappy. Did you even hear a shotgun? No. Did you let it off? Ah, uh, that darn thing let itself off. Well, I know they were something up. Hey, fine bloodhound you are. Come on. an editor suspicious, but when you get an editor and a barber, Gavin, it's no small talk. <laughs> Don't let that worry you. He can't prove anything. After the stockholders meeting tomorrow, we'll have everything under control. You can start construction again and rush the dam right through. By the way, you'd better pay off those gorillas of yours and get rid of them. They know too much. <laughs> Something prowling around here. Let's take a look in the garage. What's the matter? I heard somebody out there. This gadget fits. Good.
think we've got enough now to convince even the sheriff. Let's go. I don't know what Rogers was looking for, but whatever it was, he can't prove anything. Not if he was counting on that car for evidence. What are you doing up in that tree? Man's got a right to hunt coons, Eddie. Not on private property. Then what are you doing here? I'm a stockholder. So am I. I want to see what's going on. What more evidence do you want, Sheriff? But the car was wrecked. That's right. Then you haven't got any evidence. Yeah, but Bob and I saw where this thing came off of the car, and we can swear to it. I'll admit you've got some grounds for suspicion, and I'll investigate it in a routine way. Then in the meantime, you'll postpone the meeting? Why, of course not. What for? Because Allison's the only one who can benefit by what Murdoch's been doing. Oh, I see. That's what's been sticking in your craw. Because you can't bulldoze us into doing what you want. You're trying to involve Allison. What you say about him is pure guesswork. The only difference between Allison and Murdoch is Allison's just a little bit smarter. I'll bet my horse against a burrow that Murdoch's working for. Him. Ridiculous. It's ridiculously simple. When you fellas turn over the controlling interest of the water company to Allison... He'll own the whole valley. A week won't make any difference. Postpone the meeting until then. If I'm wrong, no harm's been done. And if I'm right, you'll save yourself and everyone who's been stringing along with you. You know, uh, I don't mind you so much on the radio because I can always turn you off like that. But when you stand in my own house and tell me how to run my business... Then you're actually going to turn over that stock. If it's the last thing I ever do. Well, boys, I guess there's nothing more we can do. Well, what? Sheriff, I hate to do this, but until you change your mind, we're going to have to keep you with us. Well, listen, here, wait a minute. What? Coming along? Of course not. You don't want to leave your father, do you? I certainly do, so I can notify the police and save him. Okay, I was hoping you'd see this my way. Are you forgetting that my father sees it directly opposite and that I'm his daughter? I hope you're right, Roy, but until you prove it, I'm afraid I'll have to string along with Dad. And you're going to have to come along with him, too. I can't leave you here to break this up. Hey! They know you got him. They're going to be up here pretty soon, and where'll I be? Probably in jail. They know they're gone, but they don't know where. Let me do the worrying, will you? When you pass the food to the sheriff, be careful they don't grab your wrist. Hey, when I pass food to that guy, it'll be on a shovel. <laughs> well, how do you think you're going to like the penitentiary? Oh, I understand it's right cozy. I'll expect you to visit me the first Tuesday of every month. I'll be delighted. Uh, bring me a cake once in a while, will you? Wouldn't you rather have some of Mrs. Bell's hot cake? Now, how are you going to hide a saw on a hot cake? What makes you think I'd try to help you escape? Oh, I don't know. You seem to be more friendly today than you were yesterday. Maybe that's because Dad's mad enough for both of us. Anyway, there wasn't any meeting today. You know, you haven't any proof against Mr. Allison. I guess you're right. But if I ever catch him, I'm going to pick him up by the heels, and if $182,000 falls out, I'll know I'm right. Pretty slick mount, mister. Suppose well, you think you can do it. Well, stand back and give me room and I'll sure try. All right.
the outrage in 1941. It's the same gang that stole Roy's horses from our corral. The sheriff's Chinese cook says the leader was riding Roy's own Palomino horse. Oh, I'd like to be there if Roy could catch him. Operator. Listen, Sally, I just got away. They're holding us prisoner at Hank Bell's shack. Send somebody, quick. Uh, the rate to San Francisco is $2.70 for the first three minutes. Do you wish to place a call? We're getting away from Hank's place in a hurry. That won't do you any good. Your criminal career is over. It never begins. You're going to have to be terribly right to prove it. You know, Whitaker, I don't believe Rogers would have to look very far for his Palomino horse that you saw stolen. What do you mean? He stole his own horse and kidnapped the sheriff and Cade. Why, you are crazy. In the first place, Roy's in El Paso. He wasn't last night. He stole a car from the garage at the dam. I saw him do it. Well, it wasn't Roy. I know it wasn't. Why would he want to kidnap the sheriff? Because he couldn't hypnotize the whole valley into his way of thinking. He thought he could keep Sutherland out of our deal. Now, isn't that reason enough? Well, if he did it and that was a reason, it's a good enough one for me. Besides, we'll soon find out. Today is his day to broadcast from El Paso at 1.30. And he ain't missed yet. I'll be listening. Huh. Come on, boys. We've got enough here to make up a posse. Let's get started on that search. Take over, will you, Pop? Hey, fellas, will you give me a shove to help me get this thing started? Didn't you bring anybody? Nobody knows but me. Well, well, that only proves you'll have to be more right than ever. These friends of yours aren't going to thank you for leading them to jail. Is that what you think I'm doing? Well, if you're not, I'll be the first to congratulate you. I'll remember that. Oh, Hank, lock them up again. Thanks, pal. Oh, don't thank me. It's for Pat. Allison claims he saw you at the dam last night, but Pop swears you're in El Paso. You've got to broadcast this afternoon to prove it. All right, we'll do it. From El Paso? By telephone, from my own kitchen. We'll hook up with your switchboard. Can you get rid of Gabby? It'll be a sense to talk to him. Right? Well, he'll be home for lunch, but I'll get rid of him some way. <laughs> well, just 30 minutes, the boys do the broadcast from El Paso. If Allison were here, I'd make him eat the antenna. Aren't you going back to work? Nope. It's a holiday. What holiday? Gabby's holiday. But I've got to get back to work, and you've just got time to drive me. What's the matter with your thumb? Well, you wouldn't want your daughter picked up on the highway, would you? I'd rather have my daughter picked up on the highway than have anybody pick me out of this chair. Oh, I'm ashamed of you. I'm a little mite ashamed of myself, but here I sit. I get so darn excited, my stomach's going around like a windmill. I'll fix you. Here you are, Pop. What is it? A bourbon soda. Sleep. You think he'll wake up? Oh, I hope so. He just knocked off a sleeping potion that'd lullaby an ox. Doesn't do any good to crank it. Better get me started downhill. Don't forget to give us a ring when you get us plugged in. Hello, KEX El Paso. Give me the master control. Hello, Jim. This is Roy. 
We're coming in on these facilities with a plus four level. You ride the game. Stand by, boys. It's after 1.30. Turn on that El Paso station. There he is. Say, maybe he's coming in by remote control. What happened? I got a terrible temper, and when I get a wrong number, it sets me off. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you anyway. Welcome to you, if you can fix it. Lucky Gabby saw him coming. They'd have followed us to Hank's shore. Let's go. Did you find out anything? Yes. I'm pretty sure they were there. Then why are we leaving? I didn't want them to know I suspected anything. If I'm right, we can see them leave from here. Whereabouts up in those hills could those fellows be hiding out? There's a sheep herd or shack up in the mountains, only place I can think of. Hey, Hank, where are you? If I have to ride a horse to too many of these concerts, I'm going to trade this bull fiddle for a Jew's heart. <laughs> Why don't you put wheels on it? Hey, Hank, come up behind that hot cake. You're under arrest. Get him! Get off of those about Roy. The young whippersnapper's made an outlaw out of himself, and he ain't fixed a darn thing. They're holding that meeting tonight over at the Casseria. That's all I need to know. You shouldn't show up in town. Ain't gonna do mighty good. Yes, it is. I've got a plan. But after I get the boys out, I'll need some fast transportation. Yeah. Sheriff's holding your station wagon for evidence. So we're to Steinberger's garage. Well, that's all right. Get me the garage, quick. Mm -hmm. Hello. Steinberger's Garage? My name's Smith. I had a wreck on the main highway about 10 miles north of town. I want you to come out and pick me up. Have you got another man to help? Yeah, I got another man. All right, bring him along. We'll need both of you. 
Come on. You see that lumber truck out there? Yeah. Now, here's what we'll do. Say, hey, look. Oh, let me at him. feature writer for the Red River Gazette, and I need a story on the romance of trucking material to the White Mountain Dam. Listen, lady, there ain't any romance in that business, or money either. Why, whatever do you mean? Trade it back to me. I ain't got any more time to argue, lady. If you think there's any romance in this business, you better try it yourself. Oh, well, so long. With you. We didn't have anything to do with it. So, which one of you guys is going to put it back? Backfire, huh? Hey, Gabby. What would you do if you had $182,000 in cash? First, I'd buy a new barber chair. Then I'd lock the door and sit in it. You certainly wouldn't put it in the bank, would you? Not if I come by it the way Allison did. And they know the serial number. But if you owned the gambling club, you might hide it out there someplace and... Spread it around chunk by chunk for the next few months as though it were winning, isn't that right? Well, that sounds reasonable, but how are you going to smoke him out if the money is there? That's exactly what we're going to do. Plenty of smoke and maybe a little fire. Well, 
Arson's about the only crime we ain't tried this week. You boys better tuck in a few more of those beans. They say they're better than a bulletproof vest. Then we'll try our luck with a little honest robbery. Gentlemen, the drinks are on me. What do you have? Uh, as the sheriff, I'll have a glass of milk. But as the president of the water company, I'll have a shot of bourbon. <laughs> when I give you the high sign, start the smoke down below, then light this bucket behind the orchestra stand and yell fire. There they are now. into the office. I hope there's no misunderstanding about this, Allison. As soon as we're able, we'll buy back the stock at the same price. Plus the necessary bank interest rate, of course. Yeah. Again? You're not helping yourself any. This just means a longer term in the penitentiary. I thought you had more sense, Rogers. After all, we'll just cancel the check and issue new certificates. I don't want the check, Allison. Well, what do you want? Just a little more time. The place is burning down! You can go with us, Sheriff. Again? And we're getting awful tired. <laughs> You're staying with me, up there. Where are you going? There's no use letting nearly 200 grand in paper burn. Hey, what's he going back in there for? The only thing that would make a high fire thief risk his life. $182,000 of the water company's money. And it's my bet they'll come out with the money in the bag.
you do? Hit him with an axe? Did you get the goods on Allison? Happy? It's in my bag. <laughs> You know, there's one good thing about this. It'll keep you off the air. Oh, but we can broadcast right here from the jail. Oh, I'm glad I won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, you said you'd be the first to congratulate me. And I am. Yes, but uh, that isn't enough. And what else? <laughs> we'll take care of that on the hayride. Uh, wait a minute. You've got to pay me for fixing that gas tank. Thank you. 